having just completed school. I was getting ready to move out of my parents' home in Bendigo so I could go and study in Melbourne. But on my birthday, the federal government released their budget where they announced changes to youth allowance. In the past, one of the ways you could qualify for the allowance was to take a year off from university and work full time. The changes to the budget sought to remove this qualifier. Youth allowance is one of the key means that allowed regional students like myself to move to the city and support ourselves for the first time. The changes meant that thousands of regional students like myself would no longer be able to afford to attend university. There were, however, two qualifiers that remained under the changes. We could either take another year off university, statistically decreasing our chance of ever attending in the first place, or we could get married. Naturally, the youth of Bendigo took to the streets to find themselves a spouse. <laughs> this was the beginning of our protest. I, with others, formed a protest movement, the Bendigo Youth Allowance Action Group. We took our fight to the streets. We organised protests and political forums via social media and were invited to speak at Parliament. Through this process, I discovered the best and the worst of political discourse. Personal attacks were frequently directed against me and my friends via social media and in the newspapers. These attacks were directed against anyone who suggested that the government's changes needed further consideration. However, in the end, we were successful. The changes were repealed and my friends and I were able to attend university. That year, I joined a long tradition of youth that have fought for the betterment of society. Youth have been at the forefront of social change for centuries. Although exactly who the youth are is constantly being redefined and evaluated, it is usually thought to be that per period in our life when particular issues and policies become highly relevant to us. This is a period of our lives when we move from being children to being active members of society, passionate about fairness and highly aware of the impact that we can have as individuals. This age group can be described as passionate or perhaps naive, depending on who we ask. Today, I'm going to focus on those protests from the last century that you might be most familiar with. Consider the Vietnam anti-war movement, the 1960s and 70s, where thousands of college students protested what they considered to be an unjust war. During this time, young people were willing to go to prison or even risk their lives. Why? They were seeking to create a better society, they were fighting for the right to determine their own futures. More locally, on Australia Day in 1972, four young Aboriginals erected a beach umbrella on the front lawn of Parliament House and called it their embassy. They were seeking, once again, to create a better society. They were fighting for the right to determine their own future. That embassy remains on the front lawn of Old Parliament today and their fight still continues. Something people may not have thought about is the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras. Today, it might be considered a tourist attraction, but in its early days, it was a protest movement that called for an end to discrimination, an end to police harassment, and the repeal of anti-homosexual laws. At the time, these protesters risked arrest, victimization, and violence. Faced with strong condemnation and social isolation, a group of young people took their protest to the street. The gay rights movement of the 80s was almost exclusively fought for by young people. Why? Again, they were seeking to create a better society. They were fighting for the right to determine their own futures. In more recent times, Arabian youth bound together, putting themselves at risk in order to overthrow oppressive government and secure a democratic process. They accepted the risk of imprisonment or worse. Why? Once again, they were seeking to create a better society. They were fighting for the right to determine their own futures. What I find interesting is that the means that the young people took for their revolution was also considered revolutionary. You may have noticed that a theme is developing here. The specific details might change, but the youth of every generation are concerned with the same things, equality and autonomy, justice, and freedom. The thing that changes most dramatically with each generation is not the why, 
of revolution, but the how. The means by which each generation achieves social change continues to be different from the methods used by their parents. Young people tend to use the most recent technologies to achieve their goals. Whether this is anti-war, anti-crime, anti-corruption, pro-sexuality, pro-education, or whatever it is that comes next, technology and the use of digital media has revolutionised the way that youth engage <coughs> with activism globally. The young are consistently more active in new media than older generations, and this has always been the case with youth latching on and utilising new technology to drive the why and the how of their campaigns, fighting for equality and social change through whatever new means of communication is available to them. Yet it is this means, the how of revolution, <coughs> that faces the strongest criticism. Over and over again, the how of youth-led revolution is what is considered improper and illegitimate means of fighting for change. However, those who focus on the means of revolution are often the ones left behind, failing to recognise that society has changed and now considers a revolutionary idea as normal. Once upon a time, it was a revolutionary idea for a woman to have the right to vote, for a black person to marry a white person, and for today, for same-sex couples to be married at all. Revolutionary ideas like these are normalised by society if given time. But those who focus their criticism on the means of revolution, on the how, are the ones that tend to be left behind, who become outdated and irrelevant. Vietnam is actually the perfect illustration of this point. The anti-Vietnam War movement was fought using the peak technological means of the time. It was fought using new media, the television industry, record industry, and independent publications like zines. These methods were previously unheard of as a means for fighting for social change. Yet the youth who were at the forefront of this technology harnessed it to unite under their common why. Their how of revolution, however, was so revolutionary that the older generations failed to recognise or accept the means of revolution until the protests had already swept up the nation's remaining youth. And even then, I'm sure many of these revolutionaries were still hearing their parents and grandparents' chastisements of back in my day, or damn long-haired hippies, what would they know? I was proud to fight for my country. If they don't want to be a part of it, they should be in prison. Jump forward to the Arab Spring, a social movement that was driven by social media. We all use Facebook as a daily distraction. Some of us might glance at Twitter for our celebrity gossip. But protests during the Arab Spring use social networks like these as tools to bring down oppressive regimes. They gathered together people they knew and even more that they didn't know, in their neighbourhoods and across the world, to enact political change. This method of social change, however, is continually dismissed as passive. You may have even heard the term slacktivism before. The word describes the idea that young people are using social media to promote charities and social causes by simply reposting or hitting the like button. Slacktivism is seen as a way of making ourselves feel and look good, rather than a way of actually enacting any real change. It is a nice throwaway term, but did you realise that a person who clicks like is highly likely of finding an active way of supporting that cause? Their click is statistically shown to lead to action compared to those who scroll past looking for the next cat video. Note that it's not young people who are calling themselves slacktivists. It's their parents, the previous generation. It's been proven that social media can be very effective in creating social change when it's in the right hands, just as music and television were used previously. We are currently seeing social media being used to create change, shining light into dark corners, creating a more tolerant and equal society. Within the past 12 months alone, we've seen Australian Facebook users overlay their profile pictures in rainbow colours in a hope that our own government will finally follow the global trend in, marriage, in legalising marriage equality. We've seen the Ice Bucket Challenge go viral, raising money and awareness for ALS. And despite a lot of criticism, it was highly successful. More recently, we've seen Light the Night protests, organised via Facebook, call on our governments to increase their intake of refugees, which they just have done. We do need to encourage youth to be socially active and accept that they will use the technologies of their time to create a better and more equal society where we all have the right to determine our own futures. 
Teens and young people are often shut out of more traditional politics as adults dominate political discourse. However, looking back at history, it is clear that youth are also informed and passionate citizens who can advocate for change within their communities. As we've seen, young people find new ways of participating. This youth activism often goes unnoticed by older generations as it's occurring in spaces that are typically unoccupied by adults, in the digital world, on school grounds and university campuses. While the means of social revolution, the how, is changing dramatically with each generation, again and again, the why that our youth are fighting for so passionately is remaining steady. And again and again, past generations are failing to recognise these movements until they are already well underway of achieving their what. My worry is that when I become the previous generation, that I will consider my means of protest as the best means. Youth have always used the most modern technologies to fight for a better and more equal society. That's worth celebrating. <laughs>